Hello, everybody. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the 13th episode of Once Upon a Game of Season 3, um, which means that there are no rhyme or reason to the, what numbers we're at for, for the amount of seasons. But this is literally probably game um, 85, 90, 100 ish, something around there. <laughs> upper, more than 75. So, welcome. Uh, the, if you've never been here before, don't worry about how many episodes are before because each of these games is a one shot. That's why it's called Once Upon a Game. Um, we're going to be making some magical story game juice, uh, freshly squeezed from a from a tree that uh, Vincent Baker planted today. Uh, a tree called uh, was it Mobile Mobile Frame Zero Firebrands? It's a mech anime style game. Uh, it was featured in the finale of a podcast called Friends at the Table by uh, host and GM Austin Walker. Um, so expect some feels and some anime today. Uh, it's always good to have feels and anime, in my opinion, sometimes, especially on a Friday. So welcome. Um, I was feeling a little stressed. I was feeling uh, stressed today, so I'm gonna have a cocktail of some good friendship, um, some good rules, and some mech anime feels. So that's great. Uh, but but um, if you don't know who I am, um, I'm Eric. I'm Eric Fulgaris on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. I'm a host of uh, Once Upon a Game and several other role playing game streams, as well as a podcast that's coming out next Tuesday called Once Upon a Cast, which is a Stars Without Number game. Uh, so you can find that hopefully on YouTube soon or. Uh, on iTunes soon, it will be on YouTube as well, um, and but you know it's already on podcast, uh, you know Stitcher and podcasts, Pocket Casts, and some other ones. So that's there. Uh, but enough about me and all that kind of stuff. Let's go around and see our guest today. So let's start with the the kind and loving and beautiful, as well as brutal, when it comes to regaining her nobility, Michelle. Estaney, what's up? Hi, everyone. I am Estaney. You may know my face from Eric's Blades in the Dark campaign that we do every Saturday. Um, and I'm excited to be here. If you like board games, follow me on Twitch because I stream board games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Seriously, though, do that. Seriously, though. yeah. <laughs> It's actually it's super cool. It's it's super awesome. Um, Cyfry, Cyfry, what's up? Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Cyfry. Hi, I love me some robots. I love anime, and you can find what I do at twitter.com slash twitter.com. I said clom at <laughs> dot clom with no. an underscore. It's at clom now. That's yeah, it. it's dot clom. You gotta get in on the dot clom bubble. It's the new hotness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, not it's not every every so often. Uh, I get to take a back seat from you know either we're playing a GM list game or or something. I'm no longer the GM for a game on my own channel, which is nice. Uh, it's a nice little you know take a step back here. Uh, cool. Hey, I have. Tibbled's in the chat today, everybody. I played a game of Tibbled last night. We played Blades Against Darkness as a playtest, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I actually got to have uh, Strass be the GM for us, which was really cool. Uh, you've probably seen Strass over uh, in the John Harper's Blades in the Dark thing over on Adam Cobble's channel. If you haven't already, uh, maybe YouTube that shit, because it's rad. But if you want more rad Blades, you should you go to my YouTube channel, my own one. That's, that's where the real hotness is, by the way. Uh, anyways, shameless, right? Um, I am shameless. Uh, anyways, let's go to Chaotic Corn Dogs. Also, uh, I abbreviated your name CCD because I was in a rush today. Is that okay with you, Chaotic Corn Dogs? Oh, is he probably not back? Oh, he's muted. Is he muted? Okay, let's go to Will first, then we'll come back. Hey Old H. Yeah, I played with everybody here except for Chaotic Corn Dogs. But Chaotic Corn Dogs. Helps me uh, make my latest one-shot scenario, so I'm looking forward to playing the actual game with him. Um, I play a lot of role-playing games. Um, I stream Burning Wheel on Sunday. Next, this last, this next Sunday is our last episode of Burning Wheel. Uh, so tune in and say goodbye. Aww. After that, we'll be um, starting up a R&D type show. Where we're going to be doing um, a system for four to eight weeks, and you know, then after that we'll talk about it, and then we'll move on. So I'm really looking forward to like getting to play lots of different games. What's your What's the next game you have listed? 
Torchbearer. Yeah, Baron Torches. Oh, I'm so glad it's spreading. I love Torchbearer. You guys are, I mean, you were already planning that before you even heard about my news. Oh, we've been so, planning it for, yeah. like, eight months? Centuries. Millennia. I have never gotten I got to play Torchbearer before. I got to play Torchbearer at Gen Con, and it was red. Yeah, it's a, so it's, a, to it. it's a rad game, that's for sure. It's Torchbearer is the one that's made by the guy who made Burning Wheel, right? Um, it was actually made by Tor, but Luke helped a lot. Ah, I see. I mean, that's just minutia at that point. You're all right. I know is that You're... Burning Wheel, Torchbearer, and Mouse Guard are like all the same game, basically. The triad. Uh, <laughs> they're not the same game, but well, yeah, they like, yeah they the operate. Same... They're the yeah, family. Like, they're the family. They're the yeah. yeah they, they they're all uh, branches little, of the same tree. Little burning family tree. Yeah, and then it's like and then comparing, it's like comparing Hiram to D and D. You know, it's like yeah, kind of. It's yeah. like they're similar, but you yeah, know, they're different. Yeah. Okay. They, they have their own unique things. So. Um, so there's a few things I want to go over though before I, I see control here over to SciFry and talk about stuff. Well, Corn Dog is probably still not here yet because he would be speaking right yeah uh he's muted in zoom right now yeah he's still I'm muted in zoom that's, that's fine he, he has to handle something real quick before he can play uh which is totally fine it's totally normal um <laughs> so yeah so this is a one-shot show um so there's a couple of things i want to go over real quick because you know we may have played together some of us maybe we haven't at some point um there's there's probably things that will come up in our games that um we may or may not realize is uncomfortable with someone else um, and when that happens, um, because I want you guys to be playing what you're interested in and bringing it because it is a one shot. I want us to shine, you know, shine fast, shine bright. Um, you know, we also have to make sure that we have an emergency break. We have a, you know, we have a parachute, we have a way to get out and that's called the X card or the veil or just being a, uh, responsible adult and realize that we're human beings and, um, this, you know, game is a conversation and being like, listen, I don't like the way this is going real quick. Does anyone mind if we take a step back? That's totally fine. If you're uncomfortable doing that on the air or whatever, uh, send me a PM, you know, whichever way you, it's comfortable, Discord or, um, you know, even whisper me on Twitch or or, uh, or our actual, like, internal chat cl uh, video client that we're using right now, uh, Zoom, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. The point is, is that as an adult, we want you to feel safe and cool that you're playing a game and you shouldn't be uncomfortable because the worst playing experiences you can ever have are the ones when you're like, I, I soldiered through this thing that I knew I didn't like, and I didn't say anything, and that's on you. That's your fault then. <laughs> but seriously, uh, if you um if if you had an issue, please try to bring it up. Um, and we're all going to like be cool with it, right? Like, are we are we going to be cool being able to be like, yeah? And you don't have to justify it, right? That's the most important part. You don't have to justify it if you are literally stopping playing, being like, hold on, I don't, I can we not. Can we fade to black on on the dog violence or like the the talking dolphins? I don't care what it is, uh, you know. Like there's a we trust you that there's a reason for it, and you don't have to justify it. We cool with that? Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Cool. Excellent. Awesome. Okay. Um, with that being said, um, we work. That's kind of the big rule here. Another thing of one shots, just guiding principles of one shots. You know. Um, always, uh, you know, come with, don't be afraid to go with the first thing that comes in your head. It's usually the best. Um, what else you could do is, uh, you know, steal liberally from things you've just recently seen or read or anything that's applicable. You know, it's, it's amazing how, uh, what you th or think is obviously a rip from something else. No one would realize that you ripped it from whatever. Um, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's a really cool skill. And, uh, so there's just a couple tips and guidelines um, you know, the X card and stuff to your, so yeah, other than that, how about we seed the floor over to Cyfry? Yeah. <laughs> Stealing from things will literally happen a lot today. So if you think I hear say anything that sounds like Mobile Suit Gundam, it probably is. But the name of the game is Mobile Frame Zero Firebrands, a storytelling game by D. Vincent Baker, the guy who wrote Dogs in the Vineyard and Apocalypse World. And... Let me get into the intro here and do a bit of character creation. The year is SC-025. Humanity has spread through the Milky Way galaxy using transit gate technology to colonize planets across the across space. Mobile frames are the hard-working, hard-fighting combat and labor mecha they've brought with them. You are a romantic ace pilot so caught up in an undeclared war for the future of the Bantral system. 
Bantrill was never until recently a wealthy colony. The planet had resources enough just to maintain its own small society, but nothing worth exporting. There was never any need for the corporate sponsors of its initial colonization to interfere with the administration. In the halls of Solar Union com Commerce, land shares on Bantrill traded for nothing, no cost, no gain. You might throw all of my land shares on Bantrill into your golf wager as a joke or give them as a joke gift to a friend. Recently, though, there was a minor development in, a, in, a, in an obscure biochemical processing technology, and the novel features of Bantrill's ecosystem went from being a scientific curiosity to being an untapped and unknowably deep wellspring of wealth. Land shares on Bantrill are no longer an ignored asterisk on anyone's balance sheet. The handover of administration of power from the descendants of Bantrill's original Terran colonists to the newly interested legal rights holders, the self-proclaimed landovers, has been cheerful, orderly, and mutually profitable. There have been a few isolated spats, of course, but practically no protracted bl bitter bloody war has of resistance between the old Bantris aristocracy and the off-world landowners. When a landowner uses the threat of violence to force a hereditary family to give up their land, keeping them on as guides and entertainments, it's cheerful. When they offer them in exchange for a negligible sum, it's mutually profitable. And when a fiery company of band thresher regulars respond by raiding their holdings, seizing arms and material against future battles, and the local insurrectionists take advantage of the upset by occupying a biochem processing facility, the landowners respond with Roos's crackdown in force, and these are a few isolated spats. To admit otherwise would be to invite the intervention of the Terran Transit Authorities, mediation and peacekeeping forces. Then no one would get rich from Bantrill but the Terrans. This is a game for three to six players, set aside an hour or more to play. The object of the game is to create messy entanglements, fall in love with your enemies, ally with your rivals, and fight with your friends. To start the game, introduce your characters. Wait, can uh, you reread those? Can you read that last part? <laughs> Just so we all hear it, heard it right. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. You said it right. I just want you to repeat oh, it for effect. The, the object of the game, you mean? Yes. The object of the game is to create messy entanglements, fall in love with your enemies, ally with your rivals, and fight with your friends. Thank you. I just <laughs> wanted to make that clear, the order of what is to what, because that's the type <laughs> of game this is. I'm so fucking excited. Once again, this is this is a game designed by Vincent Baker, you know, Apocalypse World fame. Uh, yeah. You know, Dogs in the Vineyard fame. Uh, kill Puppies for Satan fame. <laughs> So. Mobile Friend Zero Fighter Firebrand's fame. Right? So, uh, yeah, I just so, wanted to... Uh, introducing your characters. Take turns introducing your characters. On your turn, choose a faction, three attractive qualities, and a name. Announce them to the table. Um, so... Uh, I, we're on the faction page right now in Roll20. Yeah. There, yeah, so the three factions are... They have a little blurb about them that mm -hmm. you can read when you pick them i suppose yeah so here's our question where do you want to write our character's name um, uh and that stuff i made a handout that everyone can edit just called characters okay so we're because gonna take turns idea, editing it yeah the idea of the physical game is to write them on little tent cards and keep them up but in order to replicate that in roll 20 we're just gonna have a all visitable all editable handout so, yeah, who wants to go first? Who wants to make a character first? Um, I'll go first if no one else wants to go. But otherwise, I will always, um, you know, I don't have to go first. Let's go, maybe, I don't know, someone else have a, something else jumping out on they want to go first? Why do you have title in front of your name? <laughs> uh, my uh, webcam, I was trying to be clever. And, and I, <laughs> And now like, nothing on my computer is responding at all. Oh. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> Sample text, right? <laughs> I, I was trying to be clever. And it really you bad bad. Some just you got so face. excited with that anime background, you couldn't stop. You couldn't. No. You you delved. You dove too deep and too greedily. He awakened. Sun. You awakened the Balrog of overhead everything. overlay text, man. No, it's gone too far. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm definitely gonna play a landowner. 
Uh, okay, good. All right. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. While you think of the things for your character, you can read the little blurb on what the Lando's are, owners are. Yeah, and and I'll read it. I read it to our um to our audience as well. Um. So uh, the landowners, according to Solar Union law, are the right hold the rights holders to the wealth of Bantrol. I don't know what Solar Union law is, but it's capital Solar Union, so there's probably important. There's probably a lot of weight behind their their actions, right? <laughs> Uh, the landowners, <laughs> their soldiers, and the officers are all your friends. Officially, the Bantresh are your rivals, but when fights break out, they're your enemies. The revolutionaries are your enemies. It just says the revolutionaries are your enemies. Uh, choose three attractive qualities. You're confident, conflicted. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to read that part. Or choose a name, blah, blah, blah. Choose a company, unit designation, squad call sign. Cool. That's all things I will do. Uh, mobile frames are the walking combat and labor mecha that humanity brought with them to colonize the galaxy. Oh, cool. So we're like Earth's colonizers. Uh, or space colonizers, uh, like the official colonizer people. Not Earth proper, but like the yeah. Solar Union. So the, the idea group, here yeah. with these factions is that the Bantresh are the aristocracy that has taken over because the landowners didn't really care about Bantrol until now. And now they're like, oh, hey, I own the right to this property that suddenly tripled in value. Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I got it. Uh, so mobile frames are the walking combat and labor mecha that humanity brought with them to colonize the galaxy. Your mobile frame, so my mech, my mech suit, is a high-end military model, probably an Osprey, armed and armored to your exact specifications, bearing the insignia of your company and rank. Cool, so I work for a corporation. Yeah, um, like a PMC. Yeah, basically. yeah, exactly. Um, an investment firm, like like West India Trading Company is what I'm thinking of, right? And yeah. like all of a sudden, like an island that we had a place on had nothing is made of gold essentially is what i'm what i'm seeing here uh but it's biological gold in this sense uh your soldiers are like you professional war fighters okay cool so um i'm gonna make my character now um so the first things i'm going to do is i'm gonna write my name well no i choose three attractive qualities i'm gonna do this in order um i choose three attractive qualities um boy i gotta grab fashionables number one if you know anything about me <laughs> um, so I'm gonna write uh, Eric for now because I'm gonna change the name. But um, fashionable, fashionable, um, striking, striking sounds good. And um, I'm not, I'm not thoughtful. I'm confident, visually, aesthetically, mentally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, choose a name that's easy to remember. You can choose your own, your real name if you like. That's just, I mean, that is pretty arrogant. <laughs> I actually am going to choose Eric for a moment because of just how arrogant that is and it fits the character. Uh, so um, I'm going to choose the company name and stuff. Um, the company name will be, um, uh, I mean, like, obviously the, the would be like Wayland Yutani. But uh, I'm gonna choose. Um, I'm gonna think of like two last names real quick and like merge them together. Okay. Um, something like uh, the last one's German, but I need help with the first one. Um, something maybe um, like Korean or uh, Vietnamese or something like that. Uh, oh, never mind. Sing? I was gonna. Just, I was just gonna go with uh, Dao. Okay. Um, oh no, I, I like Sing actually. I like uh, Sing. Um. um Sing Maderharf Corp. With like a they they has the umlaut thing on it. All right. <laughs> Maderhof. Um so that's the name of the company. Um I choose a unit designation. Or a squad call sign. Depending or squad. On how oh squad Oh cool. Squad call so sign. You're, you're, so you're either like a general or a squad leader, basically. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. I want to be. I want to be a squad leader. I want to be someone. Um, so, what is? Wait. When I say when it says squad call sign, that's the name of our group. Like 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 Rajax Roughnecks. Yeah, exactly. Like it's you're not. The, that's your Top Gun. It's squad. not Ma no, So it's not Maverick. It's it's more Roughnecks than my own individual name. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. Cool. Um, like your Rogue Squadron, basically. Yeah, Rogue Squadron. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I'm definitely going to go here with... Um... Actually, I don't know. Uh, I, I thought I had one and then I lost it. 
Um, I just want to make sure we don't screw this up. Um, everybody else that's editing the character sheets had better close it. Oh, yeah. Even though we can all edit it at once. Would you mind actually yeah. giving individual handouts to us, Cypher? Could you just oh, do yeah, that? I can and do that. this first one is mine, and I'll name it Characters Eric, and I'll save yes, it real quick. Uh, so if, if we nobody nobody messes weird. with it, and so this cool. one's mine, and then so we'll just go. Character yeah. instead of a handout. Uh, so Sing Sing no handout's fine. I can just write in, in the notes here. Uh, so yeah. I work for Sing Materhoff, and my um, my group, my squad call sign will be um, boy. It's going to be named after. I mean, it's named after Eric. Uh, what my last name would be? Um, uh, something guard, something something German. I I do not. I'm not picking storm guard because no. Uh, <laughs> fucking the, no. the Volgard? like the people's oh, guard. Like oh, the Volgard? Um, Volg <laughs> the vulgar knots. Eric's um, just playing himself. God He's damn Eric it. Eric <laughs> <Cthulhu squad. laughs> Um. Come back to me. Come back to me. That's the last thing I gotta right. do. So let someone else go, and I'll 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 middle this marinade a little bit, and I'll come up with something. All right, I know. There, there are two handouts for you guys' characters. I'm gonna name my character Salfera, and she will be a rebel or a revolutionary. Nice. Go ahead and uh, read us the blurb on revolutionary. Mm. Just the first yeah, two paragraphs. The and undeclared the war between the landowners and Bantarich is an opportunity for the people of Bentra to rise up. You are a revolutionary captain, a mobile frame ace pilot, fighting for freedom from both hereditary tyranny and off-world rule. It is your opinion that the wealth of Bantra should belong to its people. While both the Bantash and the landowners are your enemies in principle, some of their more sympathetic individuals, families, and squads are your rivals and friends in practice. And while in principle, the revolution is entirely your friends, in practice, it contains rivals and enemies as well. So I will be bashing. Uh, I generous and idealistic choose what you do um i'm going to be a spy oh. and my mobile frame will be is a, it's a repurposed labor model um Hmm. Oh, I said I was going to. Role? I'm just going to roll monster in the community. That's what I'll do. Oath be. I'd be. We'll just call it canine. It's a canine class mecha. Canine class mecha? Yes. And I think that's all I do. I'm actually yeah. super excited because I really wanted to be a Bantrash. <laughs> so, so just to recap your character, you're a revolutionary spy, you're dashing generous and idealistic, and you have a canine class mecha. That's right. Your name is Sophura. That's right. Nice. Okay, well, I guess I'll go ahead and go next. Yeah, go for um, it. I already wanted to pick the Bantrash, and that's what's left. So I'm going Bantrash. That works out perfectly. I was so excited. <laughs> um, the Bantrash are an aristoc aristocratic family of Bantral. You are a hereditary warrior prince or princess of a noble family, a mobile frame ace pilot, and the off-world landowners have robbed you of your wealth and estates, Eric. <laughs> You've been raised to believe that the wealth of Bantra belongs to the Bantarash. The Bantarash of the same family are your friends. Bantarash of different families are your rivals. The landowners and revolutionaries are your enemies. So I have to pick three attractive qualities. I'm going to be passionate, radiant, and rich. I like that. <laughs> Rich is nice. 
Yeah. Is that rich in spirit or rich in moolah? Yes. To both of those. Fair. <laughs> Fair enough. So let me write that down. I am passionate, radiant, and rich. My name is going to be Darcy. My family name is going to be Avalon because that's ridiculous and I love it. <laughs> Darcy Avalon is a fucking Darcy anime character. Avalon. That's a that's an anime name if ever I heard. <laughs> um and I think I've got an Alice class um, mobile frame. Yeah, just to read the blurb about the Bantrash's mobile frames. Your mobile frame is a military model custom built for you personally, armed and armored in a grand style, kitted out with your heretic insignia and the colors of your house. Her heraldic. 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 Right. heraldic. Heraldic. Not not. Heraldic. Uh, yeah. Not. Gotcha. So like it's fucking you look like Reinhardt. <laughs> like I mean you can customize it, but like, you know, you are a knight. Oh, I should you're figure that, you're out that my knight, uh, motherfucking mech guard guy. So like awesome. my heraldic insignia and yeah. my house colors. I gotta figure that out. I'm thinking I gotta go like purple and silver for my house colors. That's badass. Yeah. Um. <laughs> All right. So my character's my character's name will be Eric Dow because I don't know. I just Dow's easy. Um. And uh, I, I came up with the squad call sign. We're the Worm, uh, worm Guard. The Worm Guard? Nice. Yeah. Like like dra like the German dragon worm. Like Old English worm. Like W-Y-R-M. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, does anyone know where uh, Chaotic Corndogs is? No. he's He said he had something to... He had something come up real quick. Rip. All right, I guess I'll go then. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, this is wait, this is GMless. You're just facilitating this game, right? Yeah, it's like a MC kind yeah. of thing. Uh, do, 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 do. Hmm. Well, I <laughs> think there's three factions and there's one character each, so I have to tip the scales some way. Um. I think I'm also going to pick the uh, Bantrash as a faction. Um, no matter what you choose, I can take advantage of this situation. I need a good, like, first name for a character. What gender? Um, uh, male. There you go. Let me do my adjectives and maybe that'll come up with a thing. I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to choose Fiery, Passionate, and Radiant as my three attractive qualities. Those are good qualities. Um, what's a good French first name? Male here. Uh, male French first name. Um, Claude. Claude. <laughs> Claude. <laughs> All right. So my character's name. <laughs> Oh yeah, a uh, a shield, like Achilles. Yeah. In French, is a shield. Um, Baptiste. No, you're John Claude Van Damme now. So. Bab <laughs> Baptiste. Uh. Let's see. Um. Pascal. Remy. Remy is like the quintessential French. Oh, movie. I love Remy. That's great. Remy. <laughs> Or like Renald, yeah. Oh. I like Remy a lot. So Frederic. Prince Remy, that has or, a or great Frederic. Favorite. Frederic is another one. Beauregard. <laughs> Etienne. 
<laughs> it's like Steve, but fancy. <laughs> Wait, how, how do you pronounce it? Etienne. Etienne. Oh, like Steven? Yeah, it's Steven, but fancy. <laughs> Fuck, that's good. I like that. All right, so uh, my character's name is yeah. Remy Fellini, 18th Prince of the Pentress. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. My <laughs> my mobile frame is called the Rose Custom. It is mm-hmm. a bright red mecha with a <laughs> with custom armaments. Uh, so yeah, I think that about wraps up character creation. Okay. If if not, corn dogs come back. Well, corn dogs can come in late then. Uh, let's yeah. keep going. Because it's uh, not that important. Let me open up the PDF because I had closed it. Um, now we get to choose our playbook for our game, right? Is the next yeah, step. We get to, uh... So, the cool thing about this game is that, um, it's designed so that there's different games. Like, we're on our turn, um, we're going to be... Oh, I guess to start, everybody does a solo scene. But yeah, then after, there's, there's a table of different games that we play that are basically, uh, things to set up the stakes and scenes. Yes, I have put that list on the, uh, right of the Roll20 page. So we have Solitaire, an animated disagreement, a chase, a conversation over food, a dance, free-for-all, meeting sword-to-sword, stealing time together, and a tactical skirmish for our games on the table. To start, we're going to introduce our character by everyone playing solitaire which i will take us over to the page for solitaire so normally you would play this game silently but because we're doing a show we're going to say what we do wait we choose our solo scene and we do it silently yeah yeah oh we pick we pick one of these okay yeah, you choose what you've been doing and what's happened, and then because of that, everyone might notice or hear something you about you, and you decide what that is. And they differ by faction. Oh, okay. Okay, I get it. So, yeah, because we're, we all have to play solitaire to establish our characters, who goes first? Do we want to keep with a turn order? Yeah, that means I'll go first. Yeah. And then Golden, and then Estonia, and then me. Sure. Yeah. I'm not sure where you're getting this turn order from. Uh, just the way we generated characters. Can you uh, put them in order then? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, let me, um, okay. let me make a turn order in the world. Um, yeah, just throw it. Just, just... Um, hit the thing and add our names to it. Don't worry about the yeah. turn values and shit. Just put your name. Just just oh. add four entries and put your name in it, and then you can just drag them in the order that you want. That's what I would do. Um, okay, so it's my turn, and I'm gonna make my solo scene. And I know what I've selected. I'm going with the middle one here. I'm going with you've been off duty, drinking and relaxing with your fellow soldiers. Um, so we are on. Um, we're on Bantrals. Uh, you know, like we've already. We're like. We're gonna ignore like the ship and the coming in and stuff like that right now. Um, we are in, a uh, base camp or something like that, right? Like, we're in, um, like, we're in solid, solid, um, Sing Materhof, uh, territory, right? And, um, you know, maybe it's, like, the air base or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, like, you know, our, my squad checks in, um, to sort of, like, the R&R spot or whatever, probably on base. And, um... And the and the one that I'm going with is, and you find that you cannot fully relax and enjoy yourself the way uh, they did. Um, I get a message that uh, um, how can I frame it so it makes sense that only I would get this message? I don't know, I mean, but it it occurs I mean, to me. I'm I'm trying to have a good. There could be other people involved in your solitary okay. scene. It's oh. not other characters. 
Okay, well, the idea that I have... Okay, that's cool, then. All right, so here's what I have. Um, the idea that I had is, like... So, we're, we're talking, we're having a good time, right? And that kind of stuff. And then, we like, we cut back to um, a little bit before us drinking. Uh, we cut back to maybe, like, before we get deployed uh, out from the ship or whatever. And um, we see we see uh, Eric Dow um, getting debriefed by, um, like, a higher-up person being, like... Um, like uh, after he gives us the mission of like listen we're, we're deploying warm guard here and he look and i'm like yes sir right in a very like confident proud way and he looks at us and he's like don't worry we'll find your father and then we, we cut back and uh i'm like drinking and like we're having a good time and you know someone like makes a joke and hits me in the back and i do that like the ha like i'm supportive and stuff but really like in my brain my brain is just thinking about my dad who's missing so right uh, that's my scene yeah, nice. what might people notice or hear about you from that is the end question of Solitaire. Uh, they know that my um, that I've always been in my dad's shadow uh, and that my dad's missing. Um, what they might have heard, if what my enemies might have heard, is that um, I sabotage my own dad's thing because uh, I'm so greedy and ambitious. Um, mm. And I, I didn't want to live in his shadow anymore. Um, what other people know is that I'll stop at nothing to find my dad. So whatever one you want to hear about, that's that's what I'm doing. Nice. Whichever so, whichever side of that rumor mill, uh, you yeah. know. Uh, whatever that's, side of that trickles down to where you are. Yeah, you know. So that's what I have. I I have uh, I have a chip on my shoulder. Um, I want um, you know, I have something to prove. Hmm. All right. Then the uh, next turn goes to Golden and the revolutionaries. Yeah. So you see Sophera in her personal quarters. They're like, uh, this is like pretty basic quarters because she's a, a basic laborer. And she's getting dressed in these space overalls when she hears this scratching noise coming from the air vent. So she looks up into the air vent and we see it's completely dark except for a pair of glowing eyes. And it says, Agent Sophera, it's time, time for you to complete your destiny. Sophera's like, what do you mean? And the the uh, the eyes say, "We've determined that in order to combat the Blangarash forces, you need to sneak into their mech bay and steal the power cell for their most potent warrior." And so Fair's like, but that's dangerous. I'll be caught for sure. And uh, I said, that's all part of our plan. You're the only one who can do this, Sophia. The revolution is depending on you. So we see Sophia like finish putting on her space overalls and she goes into the mech bay where she has access to because she's supposed to work on the mechs. And she goes up to this really ornate, beautiful, like like the entire planetary income for an entire year. And she goes into its mech chest and pulls out this giant cylinder that's glowing and making an ominous humming sound. And she puts it into this brown duffel bag. And then she sneaks out and she hides the power cell under her bed. And what you guys may have heard from this is that they're going to cover up the fact that their best mecha is disabled but there's a radiation leak that's contaminating the uh, the labor quarters on the station. It's a um, radiation leak? Did I hear the, that right? Okay. I'm, the end goal of Solitaire is what people might have heard about you. About me? No, it's about you, not about, yeah. About, not about what I did. It's not supposed to be a self-reflection kind of scene. So, uh, what would, so because of this mission, what would people hear maybe around your base or wherever your operations about are? About me personally? Hear or notice about you personally. I guess they would hear that they have. There's a new agent that can come and go without being seen. All right. The uh, revolution's best agent has been activated. Oh, uh, okay. Win. Yeah, their secret weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Um, 
I mean, uh, this might be stepping over or out of bounds or whatever. Then maybe I heard about that. Maybe this was part of my mission is to find you or something. I like that's what I heard about you. No, I just heard about the revolutionary's asset needs to be neutralized. Uh, that's what I thought. Uh, and you know, this is your mission is to identify the asset, right? Your mission, your mission going down here is to identify the asset. It's operating in this region. We know that far, uh, hunt it down and don't worry. We'll also hunt down. Like we'll find your father is like, what was my thing? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Thank you. Uh, totally. Fine. Sounds cool. Awesome. Cause we're, we're totally not going to fall in love or anything. That's not going to happen. No, that's so, impossible. Yeah. Mm. So. So yeah, the, uh, Next turn would be Asteni and picking from the Bantress column of Solitaire Games. Okay, so I'm going to pick you've been entertaining interloping off-worlders in your family estate. And so I think my scene opens with, like, um, you see the top of this ornate throne and it's like with gold filigree and like there's a face with like a sunburst around it and like a really ornate sword going through it and it says avalon family estate and then it pans down and you see this landowner like draped in this chair there's like trash and debris and like 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 fruit pits and like fr like smashed fruit and stuff like just all around the throne and like ground into the carpet and i'm just standing there in my finery in my regalia just stone-faced holding a serving platter because they've been treating me as a servant nice. and i think that what everyone else might has heard or might notice is that my pride has been severely wounded by the disrespect that the landowners have been showing me and my family. <laughs> nice. Nice. What might people hear or notice about you? Or what was, did you say that? Yeah, that my pride has been the severely wounded the... by their disrespect. Maybe a group of landowners seized your estate and kept you on as advisors? Yeah, I think it's something like that. Like, they just kind of hold up there. My family's like, well, make nice because they yeah. have all the power like, right now. Some person yeah. knocks on the door and they're like, hey, we own the deed to this place. We're coming in. <laughs> <laughs> you work for us now. <laughs> I'm not pleased. All right, and then it uh, comes to my turn. I saw a tear scene with a... Uh... Um, I'm going to choose... You've been training with your soldiers, and your soldiers were concerned more with fashion and style than with fighting effectiveness. So the scene here is Remy Fellini in royal regalia, his house, his family colors, uh, bright red clashed with gold and he's training with a sword with about a group of five uh, sort of royal guard type people and you can just tell he's like frustrated with them because they're sort of messing around with those like guys there's a there's a big battle coming up you know we need to be serious you know get your head out of you know doesn't matter if you look cool while doing it, you need to kill the enemy. Mm, of course. And the thing that people notice or hear about Remy Fellini, the 18th crown prince of the Bantresh, is that he's been very worried about the landowners and their hostile takeover. He's been taking it very personally and maybe he's a little stressed. If we could, um, can we put our name, our, our character name, and uh, our faction in our Roll20 name? Oh, yeah. Of course. Uh, so you have, like, a training montage? Yeah. It's a very unsuccessful training montage. It's like, you know, the training montages where it just ends with him face palming. 
Like he's like, come on, these guys. Like you're trained better than this. All right. Okay. Now, how do we? Um. Well, Cornog's is here, so let's. Yeah, let's are we move. bringing him in? Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, I'm hey, really sorry. I'm gonna make a handout for you. Hey, thank you. And then we can blitz through this very quick because the rest of us have done this. Yeah, so there's uh, three factions um, that you can choose from. We're playing like a space, like this. So obviously, humanity has got taken to the stars. Um, there is basically a backwater planet called uh, Bantresh. Bantrol. Uh, oh, Bantrol. Yeah. Yeah, the aristocracy are called the Bantresh. Yeah. Uh, there's this planet called Bantra, uh, Bantrol. They had some kind of like novel biological curiosity on their planet. No one cared about them at all. They're technically owned by this group called the the landowners, uh, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, they like that scientific novelty became the most valuable thing in the world, <laughs> um, and as such, now the landowners are kind of imposing their, um, you know, claim like, hey, wait a minute, we're the rightful owners. <laughs> yeah, uh, like we actually yeah. own. Them, and like, the the yeah. Band yeah, like yeah, and the band trash are sort of like the people who have been you know governing in their stead, you know, in in absentia. Uh, right, they were like, the what the royal hell? family, and yeah. someone just rolled up. It's like, yo, we got the deed to your planet. <laughs> yeah, right. And then uh, the revolutionaries are the people who are fed up with both factions, and they, uh, who are usually like native yeah. native Bantresh. They are. Yeah. yeah. The non like, the non no, aristocratic Bantresh. Yeah. 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 Hey. Just to give you the quick like too long didn't read thing. Mm -hmm. So. Uh. uh Really, yeah. really like what uh, what Sci-Fi has done with the roll twenty here. So just follow along and just pick the pick which faction you want, and then yeah. follow the the little paragraph thing of what you want to select. Okay. Uh. So just go through this whole thing. Yeah, you choose a name, choose three attractive qualities from the list of your faction. And then choose, hey. and just go down the list. Hey, so faction uh, revolutionaries, because obviously, uh, for like I don't know why that seems obvious to me. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so three attractive qualities: uh, charming. It's definitely gonna be uh, uh, idealistic and. Inspiring. A name. I've already uh, come up with one before the show because I'm bad with names. Uh, I'm going to be uh, Ramon Belmont. Belmont's a good name. Yeah. yeah. Captain Belmont. Uh what do i do i didn't like i I looked through the rules i didn't really know what this meant it's just your profession or your applicate your occupation. occupation what do you do when you're not fighting the revolution your what day job not what's your day the job yeah the uh oh, okay. it says choose something that brings you into regular contact with the bantress landowners or both um <laughs> uh Think of know. a think of um uh, an agrarian society, you know, like pseudo agrarian. Maybe not. Maybe you're in from a town or a city. Um, so like really like just some kind of labor. You're a plumber. Labor. Yeah. Or just a laborer. Uh, you're a hauler. You know. Or you're a captain of a ship. Or you're a guide. Or a farmer. Or a I mechanic. Think it would be like um, like or, someone driving like resources around. A driver. Oh, sure. Yeah. I don't know what that you're would be called. You're a cargo uh, loader, basically. Um, yeah, there's there's a in 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 America it's Teamster. Mm. Teamster. Yeah, Teamsters are are the uh, union that dry, that's for like any type of hauling of people. Usually, someone behind the wheel of shipping receiving, even am, yeah. uh, like ambulances and stuff could fall under Teamster. So, so maybe, like so maybe your mobile frame is just a refitted like industrial unit smuggler. Yeah, I gave it like a sword. It's great. <laughs> 
<laughs> like it really only has like the two like like power arms so i just stuck like a metal like rod that sharpened on it right because it's not <laughs> ma- it's yeah, not it doesn't built have, like, for combat or... it's built for lifting mm-hmm. so i just like either lift up really hard with a sword or lift down really hard with a sword <laughs> typically it's pretty effective <laughs> Your mech's like an overgrown forklift. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. So, oh yeah, my right. god, yeah, it's um, uh, what's the name of the dudes from WoW? Like the Magnetar dudes or whatever? Oh like, yeah. Or uh, Gurabashi. Gurabashi is what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. So it has like these long, oh. like front, like tusks. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh... Oh, guy in chat points out it could also be like the power suit from Aliens. Oh, it could. Yeah, you're an SCV. From yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is I'm not in like a like a combat mech. Okay. Not even yeah. a little bit. The labor mech refitted for combat. Yeah, it like I'm definitely trying my best to make it combat <laughs> like worthy, but but it's fine because you're you know you're an ace pilot, right? So you yeah, make it work. <laughs> absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like the uh, good enough driver could kill someone with a forklift. <laughs> yeah, love it. Uh, yeah. What do and I do? then to yeah to introduce your character, you will play solitaire. Play solitaire. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you choose yeah. one of these scenarios from the revolutionary column, and then describe what. Uh, it makes p- people notice or hear about your character. Yeah. So pick one of those uh, suggested. Uh, I think there's like eight or so. Um, seven. There's seven um, op- questions and for scenes, and then you're gonna choose one of the three answers, and then you're gonna make a scene, and then um, we're gonna ask like you some questions about like what people seen or know about you based on what you say. Yeah. There's also a handout for you to write your character information. Hey. I'll fill that in as like we go along. But uh, oh, excuse me. <sighs> um, so I've been seeking uh Bantresh uh support against off worlders. Uh and they promised me food, safety, money, but not arms, I think is what I'm going to go with. So basically, I'm just getting, like, supported with, like, day-to-day things, but not, like, military. Mm. What's that What's that scene look like? What does that scene look like? Yeah, is it just you in, like, a conference hall with some nobles? Yeah, I think, like, it's probably just me, because I'm kind of trying to like make my own way through this revolution i doubt i'm really in like cahoots with the like actual revolution (laughs) (laughs) but well it's like you know the people in the revolution know your name but you're not yeah is what you're saying like i have like my own like subset that isn't really connected to the rest of it well that makes sense because the uh faction seat does say that other parts of the revolution are your rivals and enemies, <laughs> but also friends. Um, like in principle, you all want the same thing, but like, yeah, you, know, you might not get a wrong one with the, the that other cell of the revolution. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like uh, me, like trying to do like businessy talk with a bunch of nobles i'm basically being like this is a good investment because blah 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 blah. uh (laughs) what does your character look like by the way uh my character has uh i don't know what the style is of this uh like time period slash like culture but uh he looks like uh he's like spanish so he has like that kind of like all those colors. Uh, <laughs> he had his uh, black, uh, pretty long hair. If you know Desmond from Lost, it's basically that. Like when he's actually groomed. Uh, and he's wearing like pretty, like common clothes that like don't really stand out. 
and he has uh, the insignia of the part of the rebellion of like liberty encrusted on his jacket. Sure. And he he always has like a sword at his side. Mm. As you do, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like it's the future. You need like future swords. <laughs> also, just want to point out that this is you know technically a GM list game, so you guys just have the authority to say like this is what the people do in this part of the planet. It's very open to that. But yeah, what do people uh, notice or hear about you as a result of that negotiation? Uh, with D I think. And Trish? I think my. I don't think it's anything too major. I think it's that like the actual like population of the planet starts to actually hear my name instead of just like talking amongst other revolutionaries. Like I'm actually becoming like a person whose like name is like talked about on the streets. Oh yeah. People yeah. outside the revolution are just like, yeah. it's like, oh, this guy's moving some things. Yeah, instead of like all the generals being like, this man's a loose cannon, we need to dispose of him. <laughs> yeah. People are actually like being like, "Who's this like new guy who's Yo, trying to who like?" Who are you? Out. Who are you? Yeah, yeah. Alexander <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> Alexander Hamilton's also a really good name for an anime character. Oh yeah, yeah. If it wasn't already a historical figure, it would totally yeah. be a great anime name. Okay. But uh, yeah. So now we can start play properly, really. Awesome. Nice. Uh, so we're at the, about the top of the hour mark anyway, so we're about ready for our first break. Yep. We've so, done character creation, introduced the characters, Yeah. and when we get back, we'll do play properly. Yeah, guys, we'll be back in five minutes. Yay!